Claudia. So here we go with some external rotation movements, okay? The first thing that I recommend you try is a diamond stretch like this. So you put your legs in kind of a diamond, and you don't want them too close in, and you don't want them too far out. So you want a diamond shape, right? Then you'll notice, depending on how high your knees are, like if your knees are up here, then you might want to roll up a, a, you know, a blanket or something like that and place it right underneath the knee so it's not, you know, it's not, it doesn't have too much pressure. Sometimes if you have a very thin mat, you'll need a, a, another towel right underneath your feet and you might need it to be like that. So I recommend that you make it as comfortable for yourself as possible and then you fold forward, right? Now how you fold forward will determine whether or not you're getting the movement for the legs behind the head. So what we want to do is fold forward in the hip socket as much as possible. So you fold as far forward as you can and then let your back be as straight as possible and then you just kind of hang out. And you can do this cold, or if it's very cold where you are, then you might want to warm up, like a little sun salutations or something. And then eventually, you can kind of hang and get all the way down to the ground. Once you're all the way down to the ground, then you know that getting the legs behind the head is really easy. So you can just hang out here. We'll do that together for a little bit. You can breathe as naturally and as freely as possible. I find this really relaxing, but if you're tight in the hips, you might not find it relaxing. So you might need to breathe really, you know, really intensively. So taking long, deep, resonant breathing will help you find the relaxation. Now, after you've hung out here for a little bit and your hip joints are getting nice and open, what you can do to open them even more is to turn and pivot a little from the side. So you open and then hang out there for a little bit. So now I'm working more a little bit into the right hip joint, so you can just kind of hang all of your weight over that way. When you do this one, it's a little more active. The one in the middle was passive, so you want to suck the belly in and just kind of hang all the way over. And then you'll do the same thing to the other side. Lean over, keep your pelvis as grounded as possible, sucking in the belly, and then just lean over. This is going to help separate your torso from your thigh which will give you the space to use the external rotation to go deeper into the posture. And then you can come back to the middle, hang out for a while, and then you can come all the way back up. So that's one nice easy stretch that I like and definitely would recommend for um, you know, helping you get that external rotation happening. Um, another good way to test that out is to do the same thing lying on your back. So here you are, if you're lying on your back, then you can come down like this. Bring your feet up and bring the soles of your feet together. All right, and then slowly lift your pelvis only as much as necessary to bring the feet right to the head. And then we can just hang out there. All right, then you can do the same thing. You can lean a little to the side, and that'll help you feel the movement in the hip joint. And then we can reach and lean a little to the side. And the next test of this is to see if you can keep your feet the same place, move the knees to the side, and bring the pelvis into the, towards the ground. This should really spread the hip joints a lot, and you should feel your torso moving in between your thighs, and you should feel a nice movement. You want to feel them burning right around the trochanter. You want to feel it, you know, right here, right along the hip crease, but especially on the trochanter. If you're able to target burning sensations in the trochanter, also burning sensations along this whole part of the body, right around the thigh and right around the butt muscles, those are really useful burning sensations to feel. Now, if you want to test this out, right, so you're here and you feel like, wow, I feel good, my hips are all open, then you can just let one foot kind of dangle in the air, and then you can try it out from here and see, well, how'd that go? Was that more possible? And then you can just hang out here, and I would recommend that if you're playing around with this, that you just let it be as soft, free, and easy as possible. No stress. No stress at all. Then, let it go, and then come back to the middle, and then try the other side, all right? There's no stress, let that foot just kind of hang down, and all the way back, you know, and then you just hang out. What's cool about this is it's, you know, it can be quite relaxing because the earth is really supporting you. You want to watch out for any torque in your knee. If your knee starts to feel tweaked, pop on out and see if you can start again after you externally rotate the hip a little bit more. And you can just hang out here, you know, hold on to your other foot maybe, bring it into your body, get comfortable, be conscious of your belly. At this moment, you can suck the belly in. And then, you know, you don't want to push too much because if it's just a little stretch, you're nice and, you know, not so warm maybe from the practice. So you don't want to push it if it's just a little warm-up stretch. 
then you can let it go, and then I'd recommend after you do that, just to make sure the hips are totally released after, that you lie down, bring the knees together, you might think from just cracked after that, so it kind of resets, you got to give the body a chance to reset after some deep movement. Put your knees together, keep the sacrum on the floor, let the spine be in a nice neutral position, breathe deeply, let everything settle. Then you can hug your knees into your chest and roll yourself on up. All right, so these nice passive movements to help open the hip joint are a great complement, supplement to the Ashtanga practice and a really active dynamic practice. I definitely don't recommend that you combine them. In fact, I'd separate them. So you can do it you know, before you start the practice or like I'm doing right now in the afternoon. If you've got nothing to do in the afternoon and you feel like, oh, I wanna see if I can get in my hip joints, then you could explore that. Uh, the practice is all about you know, exploring your own body and exploring what's hiding inside of all of the joints. So enjoy the discovery, go in deeply and feel the body from the inside out. That is really the key to awakening and the key to the opening that you're looking for in the posture. Whether or not you get your legs behind your head is really secondary. The primary tool is um, feeling the body. So if you can feel the hip joint, that's a very advanced body awareness. So you can thank your body for that once you can feel once you can feel the hips off. Then a whole another transformation is ready to happen in the pelvis. So keep practicing. I, I hope it works well. I hope you can feel your hip joints slowly opening over time. Remember to do it patiently because you don't want to injure your knees. You want that movement to be right in the hip joints. Feel any tweak in the knee, support the knee, come out and avoid torquing, bending the knee, move entirely from the hip joint. Don't push. Don't rush, let it take the time it takes. And one day, your hip will open, and, and when the body opens, it's like this huge release. So hopefully it'll feel very peaceful, very relaxed. Enjoy the journey and keep practicing.